Hello, graduate students. My name is Andrea Lind, and my final presentation is titled The Effect of Corrective Feedback During Repeated Readings to Increase Fluency Among Third Grade Students. Um, as we get started, a little personal introduction and background about myself. I graduated in 2011 with degrees in elementary and special education from the University of Northern Iowa, and I am currently in the midst of my fifth year of teaching third grade at Lawson Elementary School in Johnston, Iowa, and I have a passion for serving students that have severe academic and emotional needs. So I chose my topic of repeated readings, corrective feedback, and fluency in 2014 when I was trained along with the staff in my school in a new formative assessment tool called FAST which was a program that was used to design and measure fluency among students. Our school was trained in this with other schools across the state of Iowa, but we were feeling a pressure to meet adequate yearly progress standards as determined by the Common Core. So we were looking for a way to improve the fluency with our students. And I was also looking for a way to tie that into uh, my professional work as an educator, but also into my professional journey in my master's degree program. The problem here is that across the district, across the state, across the nation, we're seeing an increasing number of students at elementary, middle, and high school who are struggling to be fluent and comprehensive readers. We are also seeing schools that are failing to meet adequate yearly progress standards as determined by the Common Core. And the Johnston Community School District that I work in was determined as a district in need of assistance in terms of reading, and my elementary was one of the targeted schools. So we received additional funding to help support our students in reading fluency and comprehension, but because this problem was so prevalent and in my everyday life that I knew it would be um, beneficial to my students and to myself to really seek out some highly effective strategies in terms of impact size with fluency. So moving into the literature review, the National Reading Panel had done extensive research on the components of a highly effective reading program. And as you can see, there are five components that are necessary to build fluent and comprehensive readers. The first three, explicit phonics and vocabulary, really focused on how to read. Can you identify sounds? Can you um, intimidate blends? Can you um, pick words apart? Fluency is the bridge of all of these standards. It merges um, students learning how to read to understanding what they're reading or text comprehension. So fluency is a critical factor in determining overall comprehensive readers. In the literature review continued um, focused on a study from Rosinski stating that reading fluency is a critical component in terms of overall reading success in students and shows a direct correlation between students that struggle in reading fluency also struggling in text comprehension, which was a problem I was certainly seeing among my third grade students. So a way to improve that reading fluency and that text comprehension has been through repeated readings, meaning reading a text multiple times, and corrective feedback, which is defined as re responses to learner utterances containing an error. So basically a teacher going over the error that a student made, whether that error was an omission, an insertion, a reversal, just teaching the student to self-correct and to be aware of the errors they're making and why they are making those errors. The two main studies that focused on the impact size of repeated reading and corrective feedback are by authors Hawkins and Eights. So the Hawkins study was conducted with 28 fourth grade students over the course of 12 weeks. So these students all read the same fluency passage two times and received corrective feedback after their reads and then were timed and measured on their third read. And the results of this study showed that three of the four students improved their reading fluency after the 12 weeks of repeated reading and corrective feedback, showing that the impact size really 
is high for these students. 75% of those 28 fourth graders made gains. The eighth study in 2013 had a much smaller sample size of only one student, but this study really focused on more targeted corrective feedback. So determining an error analysis, meaning um, did your error affect the meaning of the word or was it the syntax of the word, how to say the word, or was it a visual error? Um, but the student did the same procedure. They read the same text two times and were measured on their third read and their correct words per minute increased from 37 to 52, while their errors also decreased from eight to two. So again, showing a strong effect size between repeated readings and corrective feedback for students in terms of fluency. So my research focused on the question, will corrective feedback in conjunction with repeated readings increase the oral fluency rate of third grade students? And the purpose of my study was to determine the effect of corrective feedback during repeated readings to increase their oral fluency rate over the course of nine weeks, which is an academic quarter at school. I wanted a goal that was going to be applicable to my students both in the short term, meaning their third grade year, but also in the long term, knowing that through the research that has been presented, if fluency is such a critical factor in determining overall rating success, we want our students to develop fluency at an early age so they can formulate into more comprehensive readers as they progress. This was also um, a goal that I wanted to have a direct impact on students and it was aligned with both my professional goal in my school as well as my professional goal for my master's degree. So really it was a tie-in to benefit everyone that was participating. The hypothesis of my study was that students who received corrective feedback would increase their oral fluency at a higher rate than students who did not receive corrective feedback while completing repeated readings. So the design of my research focused on third grade students who participated in a one minute fluency assessment to determine their baseline. So how many correct words per minute were they able to read in the fall of 2015? Um, once I had those numbers, I was able to formulate my two groups, my experimental group, which received corrective feedback, and my control group, which did not receive corrective feedback. My participants in this study were eight third grade students. There were three boys and five girls, and I had a wide mixture of abilities within a small sample size. I had three students who had um, individual education plans in reading. I had three students that received Title I reading support in addition to Common Core that I was teaching them in the classroom. One student who was identified as an English language learner and my final participant did not receive any additional services. So really six of my eight students received additional reading support outside of the Common Core. The materials that I used for my study were provided through the FAST fluency program. So I used a curriculum-based assessment, meaning a fluency passage that the students would read. They would read it for one minute, and they were timed on that third read of their fluency. And I would compile all of my data online. So to determine their groups, I used the fall proficiency score of 87 correct words per minute. And then I was able to determine students that would fall into my experimental group and my control group. So some more details um, explaining these two groups. Group students in group A fell below the proficiency score of 87 correct words per minute. And so they would receive corrective feedback from me. And students in group B were above the proficiency score, meaning they did not receive corrective feedback. But both groups participated in the same structure. They would read the same passage three times per day, and they would be timed on their third read, but students in group A would receive corrective feedback after their first and second reads, while students in group B would not receive any corrective feedback. So the results of my study were conducted through an A-B research model comparing those two groups, group A and group B, I conducted independent sample t-tests to determine the data analysis and I measured the 
baseline correct words per minute and the final correct words per minute to see the growth made between the periods of time. The results supported my original hypothesis stating that students who were receiving corrective feedback would increase their oral fluency at a higher rate than students who did not receive corrective feedback. So moving into um, a little more of the data piece of this um, presentation, let me move that so you can see it. Um, the students in group A who received corrective feedback started out at about 54 correct words per minute. And by the end of the study, after the nine weeks, they increased their final words per minute to about 67 words per minute, which shows an increase of about 13 words per minute. And the table here is a little bit more of a breakdown between the individual participants in the study. So you can see that the difference is really ranged from you know, improving 21 words per minute to only improving eight words per minute, but overall had a strong impact size in correct words per minute. Students in group B did not receive corrective feedback. So they started at about 99 words per minute and ended at 104 words per minute, only gaining an average of six words per minute. So again, students in group A were progressing at a higher rate than students in group B, which is what I originally hypothesized. I also conducted an independent sample t-test to compare the groups. So at the beginning, um, the difference between the groups was about 45 words per minute initially with their baseline. And then their final um, independent sample t-test it reduced the difference to about 37 words per minute, which is what we wanted to see. We wanted to see those groups getting closer together after the study. So the results of my presentation are consistent with my hypothesis that students in group A increased their correct words per minute at a higher rate than students in group B. But both students were, both groups were progressing, which is consistent with the research that we had studied. Implications of my study um, really just show that students should be encouraged to participate in repeated fluency readings. Um, if one in four students are repeating or increasing their correct words per minute, it's showing a strong effect size with that strategy. And teachers should be providing corrective feedback to students when possible, just to show that, wow, it really does have a strong sample size and effect size in terms of correct words per minute. Limitations of my study include a sample size. I intended a much larger sample size, but due to consistency, had to limit my sample size just to the eight students in my classroom. The timing of the study was difficult because we just came back from summer break, so students hadn't had much time to rebound and gain their skills over the summer. And procedure was something that was difficult to keep consistent as students were coming and going and receiving so many additional reading supports, it was hard to keep that um, testing consistent. So recommendations for future research, I would love to have a larger sample size and to see how, if these results are consistent in a larger scale and to have a greater diversity. Most of my students really needed the extra reading support, so it would be interesting to see um, with a greater um, ability range of students too. Um, another recommendation is to increase the duration of the study, and then I would love to see this become a little more student-centered to have them really track their progress, as this was very teacher-centered. I was collecting all of the data, so to have the students take a more hands-on approach I think would be really motivating and rewarding for them as well. In conclusion, those are my references, and I thank you for listening to my presentation and hope that you gained some insight on repeated readings and corrective feedback. Thank you.